It's the first episode of the third season of Ken's Think Tank. How exciting is that? We decided to start the season off classy. And what better way to do that than with one of the nicest, sweetest, smartest, most beautiful, and most classy people I know. Melissa Sharp makes it all look so easy. She was born and raised here. She's been married to George Sharp for 37 years. She raised three outstanding boys. She has a degree in elementary education and ran a private preschool for eight years. She's a player in a church handbell choir. She's a potter with work on display at artifacts galleries. She's a golfer. She's a blue star mother. She's been delivering Meals on Wheels for 18 years or more. She's been involved with the Festival of Trees since the beginning and has co-chaired it for the last 13 years. She's on the state board of directors for Presbyterian Medical Services and this year's planning committee for the Mayor's Ball. And she was my absolute favorite person to sit next to in the Parks, Recreation, and Cultural Affairs committee meetings. Man, it makes me tired just thinking of the energy it takes to do all that. But Melissa just calmly goes about making an impact in the lives of so many, many people. Class act all the way. Now I get to sit next to her and chat with her again. Want to see how it goes? Come along for the ride in Ken's Think Tank. Ken's Think Tank is made possible by the following sponsors. Trattoria de Bernadoni is Farmington's authentic Italian restaurant rooted deep in Italian history. The Bernadoni family makes food that loves you back. Drop in, tell them you saw this video, and enter to win a $25 gift card. A new winner every month until October 2019. From the moment you walk into the cave men's grooming, you understand this is no average barbershop. This is a place for men and their grooming needs. In a world full of guys, be a man. Drop by the cave men's grooming and join the revolution. 505 Motorsports in Farmington is awesome. They sell vehicles of all makes and models, as well as four-wheelers, motorcycles, boats, RVs, and more. They even offer in-house financing and co-signment. Where do you see these? So I've got the website, um, kinsthinktake.com. Okay. And that actually embeds, embeds the YouTube video, so they go on YouTube. Okay. And they also go on Facebook, on my Facebook page. Okay. And then I um, promote them from Facebook. Okay. But this year, I'm converting them also into a podcast. So, um, so it goes out on Apple Podcasts, Google Play Music, and Spotify. I know. <laughs> And hopefully soon it'll be uh, like iTunes, Alexa, and uh, maybe even Pandora. So, yeah. So, it needs to be interesting, <laughs> I guess, right? <laughs> so, how have you been? I've been good. Yeah. I've been busy. As always, I always think, I don't know what I keep busy about, but I, I am. Yeah? Yeah. So, I didn't know, you were born in Durango. Raised My mother I actually lived here, but that's okay. where her doctor was. Oh, okay. Yeah, it sounds more exotic than it really was. <laughs> we went up for a few days and came back to yeah. Farmington. So, yes. Yeah, born and raised here and uh, graduated in 78. Went away down to one year at UNM and then finished up at yeah. CU. Kind of followed George up. He was right. a Colorado school of mine. So. Okay. Anyway. So, so when you went down to... Um, when you went to college, you you got your bachelor's, right? Yes. In, in uh, elementary, elementary education. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so you were running a for a while. You were running a private preschool. Right. Yeah. I started that when my youngest was three, mm -hmm. and did that. It was a great thing. Um, I only took six kids. Yeah. And so I could teach. George kept saying, "Why don't you go teach for the schools?" And I said, "You know what? Because I can teach whatever I want." You yeah. Know? And um, so it was, it was awesome. I took, like I said, just six kids, so it was really small, and um, we, we had a lot of fun, and it was, uh, did that for eight years. Yeah. And so you mentioned George. George Sharp is yep. your husband, of course, mm -hmm. for, what, 37, 37 years? 37 years. Wow. Yeah. You guys are an awesome couple. Oh, you know? thanks. <laughs> just he's super a, cool. He's a great guy. He, uh, he does so much that people are unaware of yeah you know he's really a kind man and he's really funny he is funny yes. <laughs> you wouldn't know that if you didn't know him and he has just lots of energy yeah <laughs> yes. yes I can't keep up with him that's one thing that's made it 
successful is I just let him go and do what he needs and to a, do. And a dancer, so, man. Oh, man, he's a dancer. He lets it loose. Yeah, he does. <laughs> and he's getting more eccentric as he gets older. Yeah. He's not like his dad. He'll just start jigging anywhere he is. So, That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. I always have a good time watching Jordan's dance. He, he's, he's fun. <laughs> He's a fun guy. Oh, my goodness. Keeps, keeps life interesting, that's for sure. And, and so you guys have three boys. Three boys, yeah. My oldest is 33, and then I have a 31-year-old and a 27-year-old. Cool. So they're all... When my oldest turned 30, I couldn't believe it. It's like, <laughs> no, I can't have a child who's 30. <laughs> I'm only that's 29. Good, that's really that's that's over. Good. But, <laughs> <laughs> but they're, they're good boys, and... and uh, I love them. They're they're fun to have around. Awesome. For sure. And you were on the Parks and Rec Commission for how many years? I want to say 12. 12? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. My, my years start getting fuzzy, but I think it was about 12. <laughs> a long time. Yeah. And so, how, for people that don't understand what that is, what, what, does a, what does the Parks and Recreation and Cultural Affairs Commission do? Well... They meet once a month. <laughs> I do know that much. And they discuss uh, issues that have to do with the parks and recreation. The museum is under that. Mm -hmm. um, all the parks. So um, there were several parks built during during my time on there. Yeah. And uh, as I said, we got to name them. That was a lot of yeah. fun. And then we also dealt, I don't know if it's still that way, but we also dealt with the animal shelter issues. Right. Um, so it's it's pretty diverse and pretty fun. It has to do with all the fun things that you know there are to do in Farmington. So yeah. I thought it was a really fun commission to be on. It's a huge and, department. You know, baseball, all of right. the rec sports, and right. yeah, it, it encompasses a lot. So it was it was a fun thing to to be a part of. And so besides all that stuff, I mean, you've been you've been and are involved in a bunch of thing a bunch of things. So like festival of of trees and meals on wheels and um blue star mothers and you're a hand you're in the handbell I'm choir i'm in the handbell choir yeah, yeah. <laughs> i play at the first presbyterian church i attend emmanuel baptist but um i play bells in the bell choir at first presbyterian oh, church cool. so i've done that for years kind of off and on and and that's a, is that the one where there's several of you lined up, and each of you have two bells, yes. and, and it's all, and so you're all playing. Yeah, your thing, note so. when it appears on the music. Yeah, yes, you ring your bell then. I've seen you guys do that one yeah. time, and it was really cool. It's it's fun. It is fun. We've had some changes, and so we're kind of starting out with some new players, and uh, it's it's interesting. I can remember when I first started it, how yeah. much pressure I felt to make sure I. You just have to kind of be able to count and, and know what your yeah. note looks like. Oh, so, wow. but it is fun. It's a, Les Leach is our our leader for that. Yeah, and he he makes the um, the rehearsals a lot of fun. So, I mean, that's that's my um, kind of my philosophy of volunteering is if I have enjoy fun. it. Yeah. And I mean, I know you know some things are super fun, but if I get fulfillment from it mm -hmm. and. Um, I've been on a few boards that it's not fun, and I think if I'm volunteering my time, it needs to be something I believe in and something I enjoy. Absolutely. And so there's, yeah. if I find it gets to the point where it's not that for me anymore, then I, I will step away from that. Yeah. So I think that helps keep it fresh, and, and that's, you, you mentioned uh, Festival of Trees. Right. And I, I was a part, or have been a part of that for 16 years. And Deb Cutler and I have co-chaired it for the past 13. Bev Taylor was our fearless leader for the first three years. Yeah. And I, be, I came on board when the um, hospital gave it over to Presbyterian Medical Services. Right. And so we started with a new committee on that. And so this was our 16th year, and we wow. had a record-raising, a record fundraising year this year. And... Uh, but Deb and I have decided it's time that we step aside and let the new generation yeah. kind of take over. After that many years, we kind of feel like we've done it all and we're out of ideas. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, you can only come up with so many yes, new ideas. Yeah, so. and this new generation is just so much more savvy with technology and they've, they've introduced <laughs> some things that are pretty, yeah. pretty awesome. One of them this year was the... Um, 
label maker so that you could for five dollars buy 88 labels or something like that with your name and phone number so you didn't oh, have to sit down and fill them out on the right. tickets all the time that was hugely popular oh yeah and so little things like that and i'm sure it'll be in in great hands yeah. for that but that was really a fun committee to be a part of to bring so much joy and so that's that's a, a fundraiser for Presbyterian Medical Services, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and you're also on the, the, the state board for yes. that? Yes, yep, I am, have been, I think it's been three full years that I've been on that, and Presbyterian Medical Services is a, it's hard because not that many people know about it. They've heard the name, but they're confused about right. really what it is, and uh and it's an unfortunate name in that it gets confused with Presbyterian Insurance right. and Presbyterian Hospital down in Albuquerque. Right. And it's a statewide um, uh, not-for-profit company, if that's the right terminology. Yeah. But anyway, in Farmington, they have a huge presence and have so many um, programs. The biggest that people are probably aware of is the health center that's there by American Furniture. Right. And they've got some wonderful doctors there. They've got a dental practice there. And regardless of your ability to pay, everyone is, is it's on a sliding scale fee. Yeah. And, or sliding fee scale. They have a early Head Start and Head Start. And they have a round tree program, which is for the, the little kids. They help uh, new mothers you know, with right. their new babies and, and that kind of thing. They have Tota Behavioral Health Authority, which is the one out on the Bistai, which they have the sobering center okay. there. And so I, I feel like Presbyterian is kind of like all the issues in life that maybe you present problems for you, they are there to help. Right. They have uh, behavioral health, so um, they have counseling for um, like even like veterans and things like that, oh, wow. people with, with mental issues. Yeah. And they have um, Project Shield, which are the disabled, uh, mentally, usually disabled people, that they have programs for them and help them learn how to do um, kind of different things in life, the basic things to like help, help live life. Right. And so they have that program for, and then they have the San Juan County um, Adolescent Residential Treatment Center, which is up on Andrea Drive, and that's for adolescent kids with behavioral okay. problems. So, so anyway, they do a lot. They do a lot. Yeah. And they're in most of the rural, rural communities in New Mexico, it's all throughout the state of New Mexico. And um, this is our 50 year anniversary. They're, they're getting ready to celebrate 50 oh, wow. years in the state. And so, um, anyway, it's it's a real privilege to, to be on that board is they do a lot of really good things with that. And that was, yeah, Festival of Trees it was, is a fundraiser for that. And all of the proceeds that are raised by festivals stay within the San Juan County area. Cool. Yeah. So I was talking to the, uh, Laura Ann Crawford is the, head person here in Farmington and she was talking about Festival of Trees and she said it's it's the difference she said it's not in my budget but when I have someone come in and they don't have shoes because of Festival of Trees and the money that's raised by that she said I yeah. can go out and buy them a pair of shoes oh, wow. and so it's, it's real practical things yeah. you know that the money is used for so yeah. that's pretty and so also um, because I mean, after all, there are 24 hours in a day, and, <laughs> right. and so you've got to fill them all up. Um, you're also you're also on the planning committee for the mayor's ball. I am. Yes, that's, <laughs> because you that's just have so new. much time yeah. to do all these things. <laughs> well, this this is kind of my. It's kind of nice. I, this is my not not be in charge uh, committee that I'm on. Yeah. So Ashley Ritter's our. She's our big. Uh, she's cool. She's the head yeah. the head one for this, which is awesome. So, yes, it's, uh, so the Mayor's Ball, they pick a charity mm -hmm. and they get the benefits of the of the fundraiser for three years. Right. And so the Boys and Girls Club, which George is very involved in. Right. Um, and so I knew, um, I it hit last year and I thought, well, this is kind of my slow time because Festival of Trees was over. And right. So I thought I could, I could help do that, especially to help the Boys and Girls Club. And so I contacted Maria Rodman and uh, 
who's in charge of the Boys and Girls Clubs and told her I would be happy to help. Yeah. So anyway, I get to go to the meetings and, and Ashley runs them and I say, yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, so this year we're excited. Last year, you know, they were doing the um, renovation of the Civic Center, and so they had it right. at, the, at the Farmington Museum, and the Civic Center is finished this year, which, have you been to it, the Civic Center? Um, not since the reno. I, during, like, during it, yeah, yeah, it was really difficult to figure out how to get in there. Yeah, it was. You are correct. <laughs> It is amazing. It was wonderful for Festival of Trees because they added a whole nother exhibit hall. Yeah. So it's much bigger. for So for Festival of Trees, that was wonderful for us to wow. have the extra room to spread out in it. Yeah. But anyway, it's going to be there at the Civic Center this year. And, and Ashley Very and cool. the committee have some really good ideas. Yeah. So that's uh, Saturday, March 2nd. Right. And the theme is... Um, Villains. <laughs> Villains. Villains. Really? Yes. So it's uh, it's the storybook theme. Like last year was right? the I can't even remember the name of it. But anyway, it was the you know the yeah um, the princesses and all right. pretty. And then this year is is so are the villains. Storybook villains. Yes. Yeah. So Maleficent right. and Ursula and a right. lot of the fairy tale villains. So it's going to be dark, which is kind of fun. <laughs> and uh, so they've got some really good ideas. So the the dress is formal. So probably yeah. anything black and <laughs> and evil looking, <laughs> yeah. evil queen looking. <laughs> so that's going to be really fun. There's a lot. You know, that's the thing about Festival of Trees and Mayor's Ball is those of us who attend just have such a great time and, and yeah. a little do people realize just the amount of work that goes into that kind I know. of thing. Yeah. A, a, the details are unbelievable. Right. So, but... Um, How does someone go about going to the Mayor's Ball if they want to go? Um, they are selling tickets at the Boys and Girls Club okay. on Monday through Friday, yep, from 8 to 2, 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. Okay. And so they can swing by the Boys and Girls Club and pick up tickets. And how, mu how much are tickets? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know I, how much I was they trying are. to remember that because I've actually, I've actually only gone one time. I went last year. Okay. And it was really fun. It was at, when it, it was at the yes, museum. Yes. Yes. And um, it was a lot of fun. It was it was really neat. So, uh, but I just don't remember what the tickets. I don't remember either, and I didn't see them on the Facebook thing. So, if but you, anybody, you could just call the boys and girls yeah, club. Yeah, you can just call them. over there and ask yeah. what, what they are, and, yes. and drop by there and get get tickets. Say if somebody had something to donate, because I know they do. Um, some kind silent of auction. Silent auction mm -hmm. stuff and, and that if, if somebody wanted to donate to it, um, how would they how would they go about that? Probably them? contact the Boys and Girls Club too. Okay. I would think. I think they're in charge they'll of work the it all out. Um, yeah. Yeah. So Ashley's I think mostly in charge of the right. event itself. But as far as the um, It's just I easier to contact correct. them for yeah. whatever in, I think in so. The, yeah. Any any questions or information or wanting to donate something would probably go through the Boys and right. Girls Club. So this is right in time for, for right, the and hopefully Bowl. it won't be sold out. I know it Just, sold out pretty early last yeah, year. So yeah, hopefully it won't be sold out. <laughs> when so, this, if it, if it is, that's a good thing. I remember you coming to a, a commission meeting one time, uh -huh. and you showed up, and you were you were rushing, like you were doing other things. And then you had to rush to get there, and you showed up, and you. <laughs> I just got this mental image that is always stuck in my head. Um, because you're just like this so classy and you're so pretty and just <laughs> like everything is put together but this thing made you more human <laughs> and you were like oh I didn't have time to eat I just ran by the house and I was just hunched over the counter just <laughs> hugging down Fritos and <laughs> So, now that sounds true. And I thought, oh we, my goodness. We have a thing for chips at our house. That's our saying. It's It's been, how many years has it been? Since? Oh, a long so, time. So, a long time. So, for many, many years now, that's our saying. We're like, oh man, we're about to Melissa. Oh, that's Melissa hilarious. Right now. That is so funny. <laughs> <laughs> that is crazy. I always remembered that. I, mean, I just thought that was amazing. That made an impact. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and how it's, out of control and how you just, have to eat. Yeah. Yeah. It just made you so human because <laughs> what that, not that, that you're inhuman, but <laughs> but uh, you're just so put yeah. together and you 
you're just so classy and oh, everything. That's so sweet. <laughs> but I do laugh that you said Fritos because yeah. you know, George and I, but that's what's so bad. We call them um, vegetables at our house. <laughs> potato corn, chips and Fritos, right? that's what we figure. Corn and, corn and potatoes. That's right. Oh, oh, way cool. This, this has been fun. fun. I yeah. miss hanging out with you and I chatting know. with you. So. I know. Oh, Thank you yeah, so much. Thanks,